This is weird. It does feel like we're developing for just something totally different. Yeah. Whatever, here's your new controller. It's the same as the old controller, whatever. Whereas this is like a complete, yeah. <laughs> Just be solid muscle from yeah. just this all the time. And they're all gonna uh, shave their heads so they don't get sweaty. Esports, just yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's got the strongest <laughs> neck? Can do you the uh, you can, like get your neck off. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> we want to do some sort of virtual reality project, and we started talking about ideas. And we decided it would be great to do it with Psychonauts because we're trying this new thing. It'd be great to have something known as part of it. Well, we're doing the VR, we're doing a VR game um, as kind of a missing mission between Psychonauts 1 and 2, the rescue of Truman Zanotto. Who was kidnapped? Truman Zanotto, the grand head of the Psychonauts. Psychonauts 1 had a, we call the Back to the Future ending, where it's like, not about your, it's about your kids, Marty. It's zoom, and they just zoom off to the camera. And like, um, where, except for, I didn't like that Back to the Future 2 just took off right from there. Cause I was like, I didn't really need to see that. It's like, it was perfect ending, but it did, you know, a lot of people were like, it's a cliffhanger, you gotta answer it. I was never gonna answer it, I was just gonna, the part that was interesting to me is what happens when Raz gets back to headquarters and sees the real psychonauts and what they're really like. That was always interesting to me, so I wanted to start at that moment when he arrives there. So it was just gonna be like, whoo, that was a fun mission, and then, <laughs> which I thought, I, I don't know why I wanna do that, cause I know that's gonna frustrate people. But then, um, a one mission game could tell that story, and because it's focusing just on that story, it can make it interesting and make it a whole arc unto itself. And then here is like the beginning of it starts and you're in the jet and the Psychonauts are all busy trying to find out where Truman Zanotto is and everyone's looking at you. It's really powerful in VR when you look at a character and they know you're looking at them and they turn and they look at your face. And it would be great for us to kind of get, tell that, tell that secret mission story that we weren't gonna tell. This would be a great opportunity to tell it. And uh, to tell it in a totally different crazy way. You're razzed and you're tied up, but you use clairvoyance to see what the guard sees, and now you see the guard drinking coffee and reading a, reading, he's not reading Webster's Dictionary, he's reading a comic book. What if you're tied to a chair and you have to use clairvoyance and your other psychic abilities to escape the prison, but you're tied to the chair the whole time, so you don't actually move around. And then you can jump into the mind of this other guard and get around that way. We didn't have this whole Rhombus of Ruin thing. It was just gonna be an outpost, it was gonna be a base somewhere with the base, and I think it was Emily. I believe she came up with the whole setting for the game. So it's like the Bermuda Triangle? <laughs> yeah, that, what if it's the Bermuda Triangle? That's so good. What if it's the Bermuda Triangle? That's like where this thing is. And so it's like, yeah, there are all these like wrecked boats that are stacked up on top of each other, and they're all from like different um, eras. You guys have heard the basic idea of Raz and the Psychonauts in the jet and going to the base, and then they get caught, and then they break out and then they go into a mental world, and then everyone's excited and doesn't throw up. That's it, there's no throwing up. We learned that we don't want to move when you're doing VR. Like, you could use clairvoyance to jump into the mind of a guard, and the guard was still moving, and just that motion of the guard turning around and walking through, ugh, was just um, kind of made me kind of sick. And, oh. and they're trying to do some stuff that's like, well, it's basically never been done before. We're gonna walk down some wrong, wrong paths and have to backtrack a bit. The more you can get those out of the way early, the better. What are people going for in VR? And we make up the rules, man. Maybe we do. The great thing about VR is that it's a little bit of the Wild West where people don't know exactly what everybody wants in VR. It's fun to be part of the, the, the generation of people making stuff up because we're making up what's going on, what, what is a VR game. People are still figuring that out. But like, it is, it is really cool. Like, it's a cool experience when you, when you put it on. So we were like, this is our take on what a great VR game would be. You don't move. <laughs> you sit still. Step one, sit still. Step two, psychics. And then, cool. and then grab the handle and like open it up. It'll feel so good. Steam and out. steam shoots out of it. You can still, all the psychic powers work if you're sitting still, burning things, picking things up in clairvoyance. We actually expanded on clairvoyance more than what we did with it in the first game. You actually can chain it to different people and use it to navigate, which is something now that we're talking about putting into the psychics too. Right now, when you use telekinesis, you, you grab the object and then you rotate your head um, and it, it, it follows your gaze. <laughs> this is super fun though, like this part. We just started um, playing with different things uh, in the early days and it took us a while to realize, we didn't realize until after we were doing it, we're like, hey, this is kind of a graphic adventure game. This is kind of a point and click adventure, but you're pointing with your mind. We're like, oh, we know how to do those. And so uh, that makes you feel a little more comfortable. 
I mean, I, maybe because I, if we were not making Psychonauts 2, I might feel that it was a loss and not have it be a platforming game. But it just didn't feel like that was what the game wanted to be. When we're mocking it up, it didn't feel like he wanted to be running around in that world. How would you make some cool, fun gameplay that works in VR that still has these cool features around it? Or how do we want to change these or maybe introduce new ones? You know, the challenge is more like just adapting to what, with any new technology, like, wow, this thing can do things we couldn't do before and also can't do things that we are used to. You know, there's just, like, a lot of those weird lessons that, like, I don't even know what they are. We just need to kind of get something that feels like a sequence that you can go through and actually experience with, like, a little bit of progression. Five-minute experience test, which, like, let's just try and make five minutes of virtual reality gameplay. And there was a, uh, the one holdover from that test was the crab sandwich. I don't know, what do you guys think about this part? Like, the kind of the, the end of this thing? Like, is there a way that we can improve this? What if there's like a sandwich in the fridge or something and you have to lure him out with that? I like Sandwiches. That. I like that. Crab sandwich. Crab sandwich. Crab sandwich. The UTK around. Did the crab sandwiches crawl away? <laughs> He's on my sandwich! It's actually like, so you really just need to put it on the floor. Yeah, you just need to it, 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 it free. It's in the fridge to keep it like docile, but once it gets out, it's like, oh, oh. Oh God, freedom! It's just bread with legs, like. Because yeah. yeah. throughout this whole project, the one given was crab sandwich. Everyone was like, "Oh, whatever we do, it's got to have a crab sandwich in it." You okay? Do you think we can do this in three weeks? Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's the question. Art side that I'm most concerned about. So. Okay, can we make a, a screen lobster sandwich? <laughs> Hey, Raz. <laughs> nice. Hi. Milk. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> He's so excited. <laughs> And so they did the five-minute experience, which we learned a lot from. I think with the experience, seeing the guard go and look at stuff and walk around, it's kind of fun to like feel like you're messing with them a little bit. Yeah. And we also saw how hard um, a simple puzzle is. You had to get into the dynamite, and you have this puzzle of looking into a crate from a different point of view. And at a point-and-click graphic adventure, that would have been a super simple puzzle. But in VR, just, it amps up the difficulty of anything. So we realized that we were going to need to design puzzles that are more forgiving of um, the confusion of VR. First, we have sad announcement. One of our longest-term employees leaving the company. Not me. It's not me. <laughs> it's not Ray, so who cares? So, no, um, Mr. Bradley Muir, one of our finest, sat here for a long time, is, uh, yep. <laughs> uh, Brad was running the project at first, but he left unexpectedly, and we were sorry to see him go, and luckily, uh, Chad and Ray stepped up to co-lead it. Ray Crook and Chad Dawson will be co-project leading GBR. <laughs> we gotta look happier. We got a little happier. <laughs> yep. It's it's been it's perfect timing too because production is about to start. It's going to start. And we're gonna be going like full on production. Hopefully sooner rather than later. All right. So uh, yeah, we're making this Rom's the Ruin game. I want to try to hit this in preparation for there being any sort of E3 demo. We're contractually obligated for E3. Right. It's, it's a lot of work. It's limited to like the jet. Plane crash, fade to black, coming soon, that's it. Uh -huh. I would see that, you know, the opening yeah. six yeah. minutes of the game. Talking, but then the, that takes us back to the same thing. Right. Which is, we would need to, those would be near final. Well, near final. Yeah. Near final. Well, <laughs> final. We're trying to do a big push for E3. All the all the polish and stuff that takes it from that, which is pre, way pre-alpha, um, to probably like alpha or beta level, what you want to show at E3, is a lot of polish. Um, and we're not we're not 100 percent sure if we're going to be able to pull it off or not. So we're just starting to ramp up now, and we're just getting things moving. So it's all slowly starting to happen. So we drop the characters in, and those are slowly coming online now too, which is really cool. So. So things are slowly coming in. 
The jet is meant to be more of a, a very small sandbox for your powers. Mm -hmm. So we want the, the player to experiment, experiment with their powers and figure out like what, what they can do. Oh, cool. Oh, look at that. Yeah, here, <laughs> now you can have it, coach. <laughs> can you take it? You did. That's awesome. Can I set it all on fire? You can. The whole cabinet, just throw it. Give it a second, give it a second. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and close it. Oh no, <laughs> guys, we gotta land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna okay. Okay. Cool. All right, you have Keep up the good work, okay, you virtual cool. people. Thanks, Tim. Good luck with the writing. Yeah. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. Oh, in a weird way, like once you make those characters, they're in your head, like they just start talking again. They take a permanent residence in your head, and you just go back in there and uh, make them talk again. I think. Who knows? Maybe when you play it, you're like, this doesn't sound like them. Except for I never write like this, I write, as you know, with my Pandora Heavy Metal Station on. Slayer! I went down to LA and I was recording Rhombus dialogue. So sitting there with Richard Horvitz, talking about, well, Raz is doing this because Sasha's thinking this and he's thinking this about me. And I was like, oh my God, this is so crazy because it feels so natural to just be back in the world of Psychonauts and be talking about the Psychonauts and what they're all thinking about each other and sitting there with Richard and Chris Brown and all, just the whole gang back together. I was like, wow, this is, we're just right back into this. I am a Psychonaut. A real Psychonaut. Me, Raz. I need to speed it up. I am. <laughs> it's been, it's a good experience in trying to really like push VR through its paces and, and really understand what goes wrong with the user's experience and what feels weird to them. And, uh, you know, spoilers, but there's a crash. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that was weird because you, you can't take camera control. Usually, oh, it's crashing. We'll just shake the screen and, and you can't do that. But what can you do to sell it that, um, that doesn't tumble the person around and, you know, make them nauseous in VR? I mean, I guess we could have a bunch of crap go flying forward. Right. To see how that looks, that's why I want to get that going. And it was really tricky, because since you can't control the camera and you need them to look at certain things, it's very tricky to get the user to do that. So we had a lot of audio cues like knocking behind you before uh, the coach exits and that alerts the user to turn around. We can't make them do that, but we can try our best to like indicate something's going on over here. Actually, audio is one of the big reasons people know it's crashing. Oh my God. Why is the ocean coming at us? Ah! Camille, I need to tell you something. You know, we got a ways to go, but we're it's looking it's it's looking good. Like it, it's day to day for me. Like one day I'll leave thinking, oh, this is this is awesome, and we're gonna be, we're gonna be all right. And then another day I'll leave, and I'll just feel like, how are we gonna ever get this thing done? Visuals wise, programming, we have a bit of uh, performance stuff we still want to hit. There's still a few effects and things which slow our game down. So looking into that because you have to render two images instead of one. Um, you have to render those images at a higher resolution than most games and pretty much than any game does currently on, on modern hardware because you have to render it higher than 1080p. And on top of all that, you also have to run the game at 60 FPS, which is asking for a lot. I can get a lot more detail by doing uh, something called a GPU trace. So I can look at things like how much time was lighting, taking shadows, post-processing effects, translucency, going through and kind of making adjustments on those lights. Um, trying to change things in a way that doesn't really change the way that the mobile currently looks, just in the way that the lighting operates. Basically, if it's complaining about objects that need to be baked, whatever objects it's complaining about, instead of using baked lighting, it'll calculate it. I've got my seat back. She looks at it. Yeah, right? Man, you guys have gotten a lot done. Yep. Yeah, nice work, everybody, on the demo. I know it was a lot of hard push. Um, it's come a long way in the past few weeks. Yep. Hopefully that's starting to show.
there's a lot of VR games that are just quick little tech demos, and they're about like, wow, I'm in, you know, I'm in this strange place. I'm on the moon. I'm underwater. I'm in this cool place, and that's cool. But we wanted to make a full game, the beginning, middle, and end, the plot, and story, and characters, and jokes, and puzzles, and a crab sandwich. Romp Ruin really won me over to VR. I feel like this project is actually the thing that sold me on VR. I was, I was interested but somewhat skeptical at the beginning. And then by the time it was done, I was like, this is really fun, we should do more of these. Hi, hi. Faces, Hello. everybody. Faces. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Day of Ruin, the launch day of the most exciting VR happening since Dactyl Terror, I think. That's pretty <laughs> safe to say. Second Lots of the Rhombus of Ruin is out right now. You can get it right on your PSVR this moment. Oh. And my name is Tim, and I'm here with the project lead of Rhombus Room, Chad Dawson. Hi, Chad. Hi, Chad. I'm Chad. Hi, guys. And welcome. you know us, Beth, our community, uh, senior community director of communications. <laughs> One of those Dave things. Spafford. People like person. People senior person. communications yeah, director. Whatever. <laughs> and, yeah. And we're going to talk about the game. Uh, we don't want to interrupt you if you're playing it right now. Well, yeah, why don't you just stop playing it right now? Or you can be downloading it in the background. Yeah, that's true. While watching true. us play. Is that enough salesmanship? No, I didn't. Can you do picture in picture on VR? Or would that just make you that would be horribly just, sick? That would be weird. We, we should add the TVs and the jet should run our stream. That's true. Why mm -hmm. didn't we do that? Someday. So uh, if you haven't started playing this game or you don't even know, or if you're super confused, uh, Second Lots on the Rhombus of Ruin is a VR standalone game. Its story is completely separate from Second Lots 1 and Second Lots 2. And it tells the story of one secret mission that Raz and his friends, the Second Lots, go on in between the two games. And uh, Chad, how did you come to be on this project? And also tell us a little bit about your background in VR. Uh, I did some VR back in the 90s in grad school. Uh, we did a few 90s. projects. What is the 90s? The 90s, yeah. Oh, back, they my had computers then. tell me about that time. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was very early stuff with the headsets that you see like in the movie Lawnmower Man. Very big, very heavy. The graphics were very bad. Uh, we all got sick. Uh, it was fun. But then <laughs> VR kind of faded out, and I got into video games right after that. Yeah. So. Then I did video games for what? Wait, I want to hear about your special project, your final project in, uh, in the Ah, we did 90s. a really cool one. My favorite. We did about six or seven. My favorite was you were a gondolier in Venice, That's guiding a gondolier <laughs> down the 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 streets, I guess, the alleyways. The, Would you sing? The canals. Uh, the maybe? canals, maybe. Did you make yeah. the, go, the boat go by singing? Yeah. Uh, you had to paddle, so we made a crazy controller. That's this big, long pole, <laughs> and you would actually hold it, and it had a tracker on it, and it could tell you which side of the boat you were paddling on. And you'd steer a couple down the boat, and you kind of had to decide. There were people in the boat. Yeah, well, people. Back then, the <laughs> graphics were pretty bad. Uh, there was a voice recording, and there was a woman and a man, and they were having an argument, and you kind of had to choose who you sided with. Oh, my and God. And steer the boat towards the way she wanted to go or he wanted to go. That's wow. So Could you bring them together and make adventure. them happy? Yeah. That was one of the options. That okay. was one of the you options. You can go to a third different location yeah. that they're both happy with. Is that why there's a Venetian gondola, gondola in the Rhombus of Ruin? I think if you look carefully, there might be one in. Oh, that was a there. wild shot I just took. I believe there might be something close to it. You have to look around. You have to look around. <laughs> Plenty so of time for that. If you're looking at the chat, if you open the chat, you can ask us questions about VR. Like, how does VR work? I'll tell you. Uh, um, two, we two, transport two you screens. into different realities. Yeah. I think we shoot ones and zeros into your eyes, mm. basically. That's how it works. One in that eye, and then in that eye, that eye different times. Yeah. Very one, fast. zero, one, zero. <laughs> We got uh, Aaron coming on a little later to tell us about how that works. That's true. He's actually yeah. giving us actual legitimate us. <laughs> uh, technical information and actual artistic information from Levi. Yeah. Levi Reichen. Emily's going to show some concept art right, right. from mm -hmm. the game. Great. A concept art. And, and the secrets of the crab sandwich will be revealed. <gasps> which mm -hmm. which uh, relish to use? What which condiments can... make it extra crabby? I think melted butter. <laughs> okay, that's a spoiler. There's a crab sandwich. In the but if you watch Very that nice documentary, experience. you know all about it. Hmm. So, uh, do we have any questions so far? Do we want to have them build up? Or most of them just about like. Um, why? Nothing exciting right now. Okay, um, crab sandwich. 
lots of people excited yeah. about that yeah. aspect. See? So I think we everybody should loves a crab sandwich. As much Actually, as possible. I did have a crab sandwich once. Experience that was uh, crab sandwich experience was my band in high school. No, there was a I went to a restaurant <laughs> and there was a soft shell it. crab burger. I was like, oh, that sounds delicious, soft shell crab. It would be like a tempura roll right, or something right. like that. Mm -hmm. And it came and it was like a spider sandwich. It looked like it was like a little bun and these little deep fried legs were just hanging off of it like this. And it was... Um, was it still frozen? No. Oh, yeah. I thought it out with my mind and I ate it. Um, the person I was eating there with, actually, the blood ran out of her face when she tried to eat it because it just made it so sick to see the spider legs coming to her. <laughs> but our crab sandwich is much more charming. Sure. And had much more mobile as it runs around the game. That's true. So, um, how does it feel to launch a game, Chad? Yeah. It feels done? really good. Uh, we've been working on this year and a half, two years, seems like a long time. Uh, we're so glad to get it out. Some people got to see it at E3. Some people got to play it at PSX. It's a but big line. Big line of people. All the real fans playing it, hopefully today. Um, it's great to get it in your hands. It's something we've been wanting to give you for a long time. So. And on your head. And on your head. And in sure. your face. And in your face. Mm -hmm. And you play it, you don't need to move controllers. You play with the controller and yep. the PSVR headset. Mm -hmm. Sit back, relax. Yeah. Enter the, or dive into danger, as we like yes, to say. Yes, dive into danger. <laughs> dive into danger. Um, you heard the, the cool um, soundtrack sung by uh, a local jazz music, uh, superstar, Kim Naley. Nally? Yeah. Is that it? Nally? We should know. I think it's Nally. Kim Nally. Let's just say it's that. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah. Who's a great, great jazz singer. And um, we wanted to have a kind of a James Bond theme for the game because it's mm -hmm. the first real spy mission that Raz goes on. All throughout the first game, it's like summer camp hijinks, walking through the woods, going to people's brains, the stuff you do at camp. And in this game, you're going on an actual spy mission, rescuing Truman Zanotto, which I think I called Zanotto in the documentary. We go back Zanotto. and forth. Zanotto. Right, yeah. Just to confuse people. And I think is Lilius it, is Zanotto, but I think Lilius is, is Zanotto. Aquato or Aquato? Aquato. Aquato? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't know it's a Aquato. <laughs> no, no, not really. But uh, we didn't keep it too serious with just the James Bond stuff. We have a boy band in the game. <laughs> That's very James Bond of you to have It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was always like a pop song also in those. Yeah, yeah. The four. What is the name of this boy band? Uh, four Pauls? All Pauls? All Pauls. We, Paul. we had so many names during development. What were some of the other names? you remember? Uh, <clears throat> I was pushing for... Um, Emotion Ocean? Or was it, no, like, was no. We, every boy, bad boy name, bad boy band, look, we'd, we'd look it up and it would actually already be a bad boy band. Yeah, name that's that. true. Like, or a good we'd one. think it was perfect. Emotion, yeah. emotion. Right. This, emotion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I say this is Emily's influence because she really likes that kind of music. She'll come on later to defend it. Yeah, she was definitely the main driver of the boy band, I think. <laughs> Lots of it's concept called All Paul because that. there are a lot of Pauls working on the project. It's and true. The song is called Drag Me Down, and I think we're going to have a live performance of that later, right? We might, nope, yeah. Nope. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see what we can do. Got some Cabbage Boy for a life comments yeah. in here. Cabbage Boy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we like, we like um, it's finding probably undiscovered. Cab Cabbage Boy's younger brothers or something, maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> or maybe Cabbage Boy switched to later in their career. Right. They go yeah. pop, kind of yeah. like Metallica did. Burn on Metallica. <laughs> well, one of the big questions on lots of the community's lips is, is this Psychonauts 2? Oh, <laughs> that would be such a time saver if we just said, yeah, 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 yeah Second Us 2. Sure. No, <laughs> Second Us 2 is in development and it's, a, 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 it's not this game. This is a standalone game that stands in between Second Us 1 and 2 and it's made just especially for VR. Um, Second Us 2 will come out, it will not be on VR, it'll be on it's regular It's a completely R. different way of playing Second Us. Yeah. Right, yeah. How's the game, what's the gameplay like in Realms of Rune? It's more adventure gamey, as you like mm -hmm. to say. A gaze and click, I think, is a term gaze team click. made up. <laughs> um, it's got a little bit more going on because you're picking stuff up with your mind and moving it um, and placing it and kind of burning things and blasting them away. So physics plays in a little bit more mm -hmm. than a traditional uh, point and click. But it is a little bit that kind of pacing and that kind of puzzles, I think. Uh, it's not a platformer. You're not jumping around and, and getting sick. And bouncing <laughs> and double bouncing and bouncing off walls and mm -hmm. um, that would make me a little sick. So it's a different play, you know. It's definitely the same story, same characters. A lot of people in VR have used a teleportation to move around without making you sick, but I like how we 
Rhombus uses uh, the context of psychic exploration, so you're jumping right. into people's points of views, jumping in their heads. So it kind of makes sense where you're going to specific locations because there's a person there looking there, and you're you're seeing the world through their uh, eyes and through their brain. So sometimes you get a, a glimpse at how they see the world and how they see the world differently because maybe they're having a hallucination or something like that. Right, and you kind of get that. You see another character, and what are they looking at? You go into their mind, and then you see what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Kind of have that uh, premonition. So for people who get um, motion sickness in VR, we think that we've not solved, but done a good job <coughs> to kind of definitely avoided that. any of the we've risky minimized things. it as much as we can. Yeah. Um, you don't move. I mean, the character doesn't move. Some of us, uh, Duncan, he never really got too sick. Silvio was pretty good too, but I think uh, Emily, myself, and Tim were on the sort of other end of the spectrum mm -hmm. where. Uh, I just plug in a headset and I get sick. Yeah. Someone else I just look at one across the room. No. <laughs> um, Watch out for that one over there. It's gotten better. At the beginning of the project, we weren't optimized. We didn't know what we were doing. We made ourselves sick every day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, VR doesn't run really at the right stinky. frame rate. It'll right, make you right. sick, right? But just by the end, we badly. are doing much better. By the end, we're doing much yeah. better. It runs really fast, and it looks really good. I think it stands out among VR games. It's like a beautiful-looking game. Yeah, as Levi will show, like, lighting played a huge bit, and us using the Unreal Engine and doing the lighting with it uh, really got the game looking, looking nice with the colors. Yeah. But keeping things like shadows and dynamic lights were something that was important to us to keep up with the visuals. Some games in VR, they just go flat shaded, are no lights or no shadows. Uh, we wanted to keep Psychonauts looking as good as we could. Because mm -hmm. in, in some ways, this was a little bit of an art push for Psychonauts, too. We wanted to take the old Psychonauts and kind of bring it up to modern standards. So. And remember how to build those crazy characters. Build the crazy <laughs> characters, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to bring in young Mr. Reagan uh, to talk about art? While he's walking over here. Our first guest. A lot of people want to know, <laughs> will this ever come out on a different VR platform, say on a PC? Uh, right now we're like focusing that. on this platform. Mm -hmm. uh, this game was generously funded by some. By PlayStation. Oh, by PlayStation. By, yeah, right. by yeah. all they're the same, one and the same. I think you're going to say yeah, by LaCroix. Like by sponsored by <laughs> sponsored by oh another look one nice yeah. sponsored by unbranded coffee product oh hey Levi, Levi. how do you appear here am I supposed to see myself I want to see myself do you, you like that's not a mirror you look, like mirror. <laughs> you look right. yeah yeah where's all the right. beer you guys tricked me no mirror not beer oh okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how they got. Over there, that's how they got me to do lighting. They're like, "Who knows how to do lighting a beer around here?" And all I heard was "here," and I raised my hand, thinking it was beer. I don't even know how to do lighting, but I somehow got tricked into doing it for this game. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you do the lighting on this game? Did you I prepare just, a little? Uh, yeah, I, I winged it. A little thing here. What are you going to show us? Um, I think one of the first levels that we did lighting on uh, was the jet. But everybody's seen the jet already, I think. Right. Um, we showed that a lot. So, yeah. uh, and it's actually pretty straightforward in terms of lighting. So I was thinking that we would go into uh, one of the first locations that Raz actually goes to, um, which is the That's outpost. Forward. Oh man! Look and uh, so super drippy. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a headset on. I'm not virtually here. Uh, <laughs> and I won't show you know who. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is what our editor looks like. And, um, I was going to say, what are those little hex files? Yeah, so you get all these little hex files hanging out that uh, are singing little musical songs. Um, so anyone who works on Unreal will probably recognize all these things, right? Yeah, the same there's a the... lot going on. Um, but when you get one of these scenes, uh, when it's been, uh, oh, look at that. Let's little help you out. Um, it's been a while since I've been in here, so I'm going to figure out where the uh, hotkeys are for. I'm going to do it. Hey, Duncan, where's uh, just the we'll bring in Duncan. screen yeah. change ones? Yeah. We'll show us that. Yeah. You know. I like hotkeys. Um, yeah. That's Whoa. better. So you get all the, uh, yeah. Yep. That, our, now mm. I get it. This is how I see the world all the time. Yeah, sure. I mean, this is what Same. a real mind would be amazing. Are they hexapals? Uh, these are volumes for sound. Uh, there's a lot of other things like uh, emitters for particles, all these things. Blood um, coming from the ceiling, nice. Yeah. Very heavy metal. But uh, when you get the level at first, it's, uh, it doesn't really have any textures in it. And <laughs> <laughs> but you lose a lot of the believability in, in um, cool. materials. And you really appreciate like, how far in a first-person game mm -hmm. 
uh, especially now that it's in 3D, when you get these things up and you can actually bring them and look, them, look at them like right at your nose level. Mm -hmm. uh, materials play a huge part. So, um, like, would you do something that you would on your screen look one way and you change your mind about it once you put the headset on? Uh, it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, and with lighting as well. Like, um, just being in 3D really has a lot of implications for um, level of detail and believability. And uh, most of the game, we are on PC making it, but uh, we check it every so often by pushing it to uh, the PlayStation to get to get a real feeling for what's really gonna um, be there. So here's a lighting pass with. Um, and uh, yeah, you can all move some of these lights around to see sort of where I place things. But this one actually has um, a set of material, normal maps, but no color maps. So uh, one thing that was really different from the original Psychonauts is that we have materials that are actually physically believable, uh, <laughs> which means you cannot mistake them from anything that's in our own world. Um, but so this is just lighting. You can see that these are normal maps, which are giving a little bit of the fluctuation of uh, lighting on them, making things look uh, bumpy. bumpy. Uh, and also a roughness map. You can see the way that uh, the tops of these are kind of like a little bit shinier because feet have been, or uh, fins have been walking across them. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is a basic, um, before I get this scene, it's like very, very, uh, what is it? We just put in like a, a few lights to rough it in. Uh, we have... And the monitors. Yeah. No textures except for one monitor has a really elaborate static on it. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it was really pretty fun because I didn't really have to worry about um, doing any concept art this whole time. Other people were taking care of that and I just got the awesome final product and got to put these lights and knock out very specific kind of moods going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really what is the mood in this fun. little area here? What is this? Uh, it's kind of a dank, seedy, uh, I, I don't know, I really loved uh, City, of Lo City of Lost Children. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen that mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. um, that moody kind of pools of light, it's almost, uh, if you know, if can I say that this is yeah, I don't wet. know. I don't even know what very I can wet. say. Yeah, it's very damp here. Yeah, <laughs> damp. Uh, yeah, it, it's got a bit of that like, yeah. Look at this like bathysphere looking thing. There's got a, a nautical nautical theme going on here. So mm -hmm. like, uh, the pools of light went really well with giving it like a dramatic kind of uh, kind of theater lighting. Did you just save your file? I have no idea what I did. Oh, man. He's yeah. checking it in. Oh, yeah, yeah. New, I just pushed the build. You guys yeah. can update patch. your. Just have to an update with that yeah. one spotlight yeah. slightly <laughs> over. One thing that got you know Levi had to work on is we place all the characters around the level, <gasps> and you needed a good light on each character so you could see it. If you're all the way across the room looking for who you might go into whose head next, you needed to pick up a character. So as we moved characters around, it made Levi a little crazy. Complained a lot. Yeah, you can tell he's got paint, pent up rage yes. inside him about that. He's not, he's not even got a comment. <laughs> Put his guard over here. Yeah. Um, one thing that drove everybody else crazy that was a part, and this is me doing lighting for the first time uh, and getting used to it, but um, the fact that we had a bite, uh, baked lighting uh, for our game. You know, like we've done with the Buddha engine, it was uh, dynamic mm -hmm. throughout, and I think in stacking we did baked lighting, but. Um, what that means is you can have as many lights in the scene as you want, which is amazing, and you can get really, really nice soft shadows, um, but not all of the lights can be ones that move around. It means that you have to actually um, decide which lights are gonna become stationary, and those ones get really nice soft shadows, but you have to just set the computer running and it'll uh, bake all those things in so that they're permanent. But uh, anytime you move one of those lights and then someone else or someone else fidgets with the scene, um, you'll have to do that process again. And that well, was like that, uh, that light on the bottom of the platform. That thing the player moves around. <clears throat> sure. So that's got to move around and, and be dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy here. Yeah. That's not actually a light. We tricked you with that one. Fake. Yeah. yeah. That just is a Don't glowing ruin the magic. thing. Don't ruin the magic. Yeah. It's just a glowing thing. Uh, Secrets. Secret. <laughs> Secret tricks. <laughs> Tell us about that guy, that fish guy. 
Uh, no, that's no. This guy here. All right. Really cool. All right. Enough of this. <laughs> enough of this. Going great. He looks um, a little. Um, yeah. Appreciate any other any questions for Levi from the chat? Um, it's the Psychonauts too. They're talking about uh, SpongeBob and Bioshock. <laughs> it um, is basically SpongeBob. And SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who knows Unreal, looking, critiquing the number of lights that Levi has in the scene, I would never <laughs> use that kind of lighting. And that, no, no. <laughs> uh, what makes normal maps so normal? Oh, that's yeah. a good question. What's a mo what's a yeah. map that's not normal? Yeah. Look at that little air, that little flying V guitar. Nice. <laughs> yeah, why are they called normal maps? I've never even thought about it's that. It's a math term. <laughs> <laughs> it's a math term, a normal, a normal. It's like a tangent. A it's something to do with maths. It's math. This is all flying over my head right now. Yeah. It's a great question. Uh, a normal is actually, uh, it's, it's on every vertice, right? It's either vertice based or it's on every polygon quad and it will uh, stick out. In a certain oh, per pixel. It's a ray that is wow. directly we know points everything. away we from hands. a face <laughs> and, uh, of the plane. Surface, right? exactly. Yeah. Sure. So each one of these uh, has a little imaginary line pointing out, and that's <clears throat> telling and that, the object when light hits it what angle it should be hitting that yeah. object. I do know it. There you go. I do know beautiful, it. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank mm. you, Levi. Probably Thank you, like Levi. a Pro Magnon level of explaining it. Though. How, uh, how plot relevant is Ramos of Ruin for Psychonauts 2? Is this completely standalone? Uh, it stands alone. There are little threads that kind of go through all three games. So if you play them all, you pick up these little hints and little foreshadowing things. But you definitely don't need to know any of this information, or even to play the first game to understand what's going on in this game. But uh, it makes it a richer, I think. It makes the second one too richer if you, if you know this story. But um, uh, second one too will definitely start with uh, all the information you need to play that game. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to bring in more Thank art? you, Levi. Sweet. Thank you, Levi. I'm out of here. Who's coming in next in this magical one? Oh, it's, we're going to get a little technical. Maybe someone who knows why they're called normals. <laughs> someone a little more. <laughs> someone a little more normal. <laughs> you did a really a good job, normal. Levi. That was yeah, pretty yeah, good, yeah, Levi. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you, good. Levi. Thank you. I didn't get a LaCroix. <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, you <didn't> <laughs> You have to get them to sponsor your live stream, and then... Who's next, Chad? Uh, Meet the team. Aaron's coming in. Um, Aaron was one of our star programmers on the team, uh, mostly focusing on optimization. His job day one was get this thing running fast and make it not crash. <laughs> mm -hmm. All those kind of fun things. Mm -hmm. So he jumped right in like a moth to Speaking a flame. Speaking of jumping like right in. Like a moth to a flame. There, look at that, amazing. Youth and vigor. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the Hello. show. Hello. Guess what we're talking about today? Uh, ruined rhombuses. Yeah. yeah. Ruined rhombuses. Ruined rhombi. Yeah, yeah. First question, why are they called normals? Uh, because they define the direction that is the normal of the surface. The direction the surface is facing. Why is that called normal? It's a mathematical term. Oh, math. Because math. Um, <laughs> great. So, why don't you, Chad, why don't you take over this interview and ask technical questions of Mr. Uh, Jacobs? Sure. So, when you started on the project and you first ran it, how fast was it running? Uh, not very. Not very fast. Yeah. Right. Which <laughs> was, is a lot of fun. Uh, first couple of weeks in this project, I think I got more sick in VR than I would have liked to. Um, it's a safety issue. It's a, it's a good motivator to get the game running well. It's mm -hmm. like, if I get this running well, I'll feel less nauseous at work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, the, the tricky bit is, you know, we start off and we have the artist going through and making some really awesome looking stuff. Um, but they don't usually uh, have as much concern towards how uh, efficient all the work they're doing is. Right, right. Uh, nor do they necessarily understand what some of the trade-offs will be. So if you have an engine like Unreal, uh, compared to other engines, there might be some things that are faster or slower. And uh, like I said, all the sorts of trade-offs, it's hard to know uh, which path to go down. Um, and so we have this game, and I jumped in that looked really cool. We were working on getting the jet uh, hooked up for E3. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really jumpy, and we didn't want to make people sick. So um, my first task was basically going through and doing as much work as possible in the jet to make it run at a good, fast, stable frame rate, um, but without having to uh, compromise the artistic integrity of anything. Yeah, generally we try to let the artists go as crazy as they can and try to get the look, you know, to make it look as good as they can. Yeah. As if it was going to be a movie. And, and then you come in and you're like, well, 
And then take the dial and crank it down from 11, just a couple notches. Aaron, any of this. Aaron is an artist at his heart, too. So the last thing he wants to do is tell a poor artist like Levi, Levi, mm -hmm. I'm taking out all your lights just so the game can run. So you just so, open the file and you delete three random delete lights. Yeah, I just <laughs> grab, I go, I go on this list over here and I grab random things. It just has a script. You one. just run right. it. Normal maps delete. No, you got some tools you Make use to kind sad, of. Make um, artists sad, Just double click. You got some yeah. tools you use to kind of figure out where the lighting is. Are you going to show us a little bit of that? Um, I can show a couple things. So, sure. yeah. So we're talking about lighting before, and we was talking about baked lighting. Um, Unreal has some cool tools that let us see um, how expensive the scene is in terms of various different things. Lighting is one of them. Um, uh, so, for instance, let's see here. Well, let's start with shader complexity. Oh. So, so shader complexity, this view. You uh, can do F11 if you want to do. Yeah. Cool more, blood. more blood. More <laughs> blood. Uh, this, this, all this of a sudden, it's an indie game. Yeah, that's like yeah. <laughs> this. This uh, view, this. Uh, it shows how expensive it is to draw every individual pixel on the screen. So if you look on the bottom, there's kind of like that bar. So on the far left, we have the green values. Those are good. Those are fast to draw. Um, uh, then it goes through kind of red to pinkish color up to white. Um, um, it looks kind of cute, though. It does look blood, like blood, yeah. Blood. Yes. Christmas so, blood. So you can see, you know, like some of the walls and simpler surfaces here, they're all green, everything's looking fine. Um, but when out. we have a lot of overlapping things, so like we have little uh, particle effects here of uh, water um, and window over there with some glass, and here we have some smoke and things like that. And we have all these transparent surfaces layering on top of each other. And whenever you have all these transparent things layering on top of each other, uh, you have to draw each individual layer one at a time. And so if you have, like here we've got a whole bunch of smoke, you can see right in the middle of where the smoke particles are, um, it's really expensive. And it's kind of interesting because if you go into the game, looking at that, you wouldn't necessarily think that, you know, that looks really expensive and that's going to cause frame rate problems and that's why we have to go through and take special care to uh, mm -hmm. adjust these things. Like I said, this looks like, oh, you know, no big deal. Then you open this and it's like everything's red and blood and we're dying. <laughs> um, <laughs> Did you, you pick the colors? You pick the colors, Leva? Uh, actually, there's a funny, I can see if I can find it. I have a funny image from uh, just before uh, E3 when I was going through. Um, and we have, spoiler alert, there's a crash sequence in the, uh, in the jet. That's um, in the trailer. Oh, actually, I don't know if I have that on here. Yeah, yeah fair enough. It's in the trailer. But, you get stressed uh, out when you walk by normal lights and, and smoke. <laughs> like, oh, God, that's really dragging down the frame rate. Um, at first, yes. The, but. Uh, Early on in the project, I was able to work with Levi, um, and like I so just kind of discuss with him and let him know like what what options we had for lighting, what worked well, and what was efficient and what wasn't. Um, and our artist did a really fantastic job of uh, being able to create scenes that looked visually very impressive, but were right. not as expensive as you would have thought. Um, and you and Matt worked on a cheap light. Can you tell yeah, us a little bit about one that? of our other graphics programmers, uh, Matt Enright, made a, a special cheap lighting system that we could use. Um, Let's see if I can have a good example of that. Uh, a light that was not as accurate and not as uh, quite as pretty, but was did a really good job of lighting areas, filling areas with light. Um, he invented a whole new kind of light. Yes, exactly. A different wavelength of yet unseen light to man. <laughs> but here is an example of a cheap light. So the, this light here, um, which I can turn on and off, um, this light it uh, fills a large area of space when you are in this perspective, and so when you're here and looking around, it's covering a lot of your view, and therefore it can be kind of expensive to draw. Um, but we didn't need a very specific uh, reflection from it or anything like that. It was just sort of a light to fill the scene, and so we have this special option that we coded into the engine. And you can see when I turn it on and off, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a visual difference, but it's not like you would look at that you know, right offhand and say, oh, that looks wrong. It's just, it looks a little different. But if our artists hmm. know how to use that well, uh, they can use that as well. Which one was which? So here, exactly, right? So here is the cheap version, and here is the more accurate version. Yeah, I like the cheap one better. <laughs> Why does it look nicer? Um, there's a little bit of difference with color saturation and some other, other things due to how the lighting is being calculated. This is like my dad coming through the room being like, we're going to put in these fluorescent lights instead of the, <laughs> instead but of but the, the, the new kind that are much nicer looking. <laughs> <laughs> Spray paint yeah, on. Yeah, these are the energy mm -hmm. efficient white LEDs. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> Uh, people in the chat are enjoying our use of uh, the term expensive when talking expensive, about uh, yes. game development. I guess okay. they're not used to. So, to yeah, so, so in performance, I mean, the, my world essentially is, fits within 16.6 .6 milliseconds as far as anything I care about. For this game, we had to run the game um, at 60 frames per second solid. Like, we could not drop frames basically anywhere. 
Um, so in order to run a game at 60 frames per second and generate you know, 60 different images, you have 16.6 milliseconds to do all of that work. So if you think of, of the game in terms of each individual frame, yeah, you've got 16.6 milliseconds. And uh, is within that, that it's, a, it's a little The entire budget. frame is, or is that how much lighting gets out That's of That's the, the entire frame. Entire frame. 16.6 okay. milliseconds. So you don't get all of that, because some of that is for like other stuff. The game it doing, gets right? divvied up to a, a various number mm. of things. Um, so let's see if I can do. So as expensive goes, you buy stuff in terms of milliseconds. Yes. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally, it's, it's like a budget. It's if you have you know, a budget for your own spending and bills and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's kind of like lighting is one of your bills and shadows right. are one of your bills and um, everything costs a certain amount. And instead of being in dollars, it's in milliseconds. But here's an example. Uh, it's not going to be very readable on stream probably. But this is sort of a breakdown oh, of the frame do look expensive. from left to right. And you can see yeah, for this current shot, uh, how much of our budget, how much of our time is being spent in each individual area. So yeah, lighting you can see here is a big chunk. In, in a lot of our game, uh, we do a lot of lighting, a lot of shadowing, and so lights are a big part of it. Um, and so it's important, we, we've gone through and done a lot of little modifications of Unreal to uh, go through and, and adjust features we may not use very much to, to lower their quality and allow us to focus our efforts on, on what we care about the most. Jokes. Jokes. Jokes look uh, pretty cheap. Floppy yeah, toilet paper. <laughs> for which which one of those is jokes? Very nice floppy yeah. toilet paper in there. Yeah, jokes is that little stiff. pink part there. I think you need the more jokes. Wait. Yeah, yeah, the joke. Is the joke. that the pink part? B jokes budget for more here. jokes. Yeah. The dialogue running actually that yeah. slice. <laughs> yeah, any game could have had stiff toilet paper, but we knew that would be abrasive over time. We just, and it's, it would cause yeah. pain. So yeah. we have floppy, soft toilet paper. Quilted. Yeah, Yeah, double quilted. <laughs> there really is floppy toilet paper. There, there definitely is. <laughs> Floppiest. Yeah. And you can light it on fire. That's another fun thing, Parker. Yeah, try that. Um, well, great. I feel optimized already. <laughs> <laughs> I feel lighter just sitting here. Um, well, cool. Shall we, shall we spring him and bring in Emily? 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 All right. Bye, Aaron. Thanks Bye, for coming. Emily. Thanks. Thank you for all the smoke and running water. Or the lack of smoke and running water. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for deleting all the lighting. We're kind of moving backwards through the game. We're showing the final product, going back through optimization, yeah. and then we're now we're going to show some concept art some from oh, Emily Johnstone. Oh, real paper oh. stuff! Look out! Wait, you brought paper? I brought some paper. Oh my god, this That's is how very high tech. It is yeah. very high tech. How are you binding all these papers uh, together so they do not get confused? We'll talk about them later. Now, uh, this is your chart of optimization. Yes, I don't know what's going on, window, but yeah. it was red's bad. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, let's see here. No spoilers. No spoilers, I will try my best. All right, let me find this. People would like to know if the crab sandwich will get a starring role in Psychonauts 2 or if we're gonna do any spin-offs. It's called Psychonauts 2 crab sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> changing that up. They are tasty. <laughs> it's true. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Very yeah. True. Yes, totally yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna, whose are these? Mm -hmm. Wait, no. They're ours. They're yours to do, oh. to enjoy. How long will this stream last? That's a question from long Christian. Long enough. 20, minutes? 20 more minutes, maybe. Wait, yeah. I have a 4:30 meeting. I'm looking for my user folder. <laughs> <10 minutes? laughs> this is it. This is your meeting. Uh, what did you do on the project? Um, my I'm Emily Johnstone, and I uh, I was an artist on this project, mm -hmm. and I got to do background concept art. And I got to do uh, design, a little bit mm -hmm. of design. It was in the documentary. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Search the tapes. I think I remember. And I, I did some sto some storyboards. Oh, what do you want to show us first? Um, I want to show some concept art because that's fun, fun, sort of super fun. All right. So <laughs> at the beginning, we had a katamari ball. We had a katamari ball. How do I make this? Full I screen? remember that. I like that's katamari not full ball. screen. Peter Chan changed it to be the, uh... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is this gonna, <laughs> is this gonna be a video? Okay. So we had an art jam, and uh, we had Peter Chan, and we had Scott C, and Bagel, and myself, and I think Derek came at one point, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and artists, a whole bunch artists of artists come together in a ball. In a room for a week. Jamming. Of jamming, and we uh, sort of came up with uh, this idea of uh, this pile of all these vehicles that were like stuck together at the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And early on, th this is like a paper and pen and watercolor, 
and uh, we, we were calling it the Katamari Ball at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So it was That's like right. all these like UFO and a duck for some reason. <laughs> I and, like the uh, duck. <laughs> yeah, nice. And jets and mm -hmm. UFOs. And um, mm -hmm. we, we, we started out with that. And mm -hmm. it was a pretty cool idea. Mm -hmm. And as, as we went down, uh, Bagel did this and he started doing like mood pieces. Nude pieces? M mood pieces. Mm. Sangle does a lot of nude pieces. He did. Yeah. He does. He does. <laughs> uh, what, what I like about saying about uh, concept art is um, you see all these like really polished uh, versions of, of art, and that's not really the case. In, in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's like really like a lot of iteration and rough drawings, or like calling them ugly drawings, mm -hmm. which happens a lot. Yeah, where does is, where is all this polished concept art for game development? I don't well, know. I see that in, like, who's doing all this fancy? Who has time to do all these fancy, fancy drawings? I guess they have people. That's like people doing it, it afterwards, like a background. Right. They're yeah. like, well, yeah. well, this scene was really good. Quick, somebody, yeah, somebody do a really it. good painting of it. So uh, Bagel did some mood drawings, and this is sort of a, a early version of the outpost, I believe. And, uh, and here's sort of yeah. every different uh, hideouts and stuff. And um, Say did this drawing where mm -hmm. it was just a whole bunch of different iterations of the Katamari ball. And uh, later, Peter Chan came in and he showed us for some reference. reference. Big on reference. So that magnet, that thing. magnet thing. And mm -hmm. I love that magnet thing. That was so cool. Just I was the sad to see the Katamari ball go, but I did kind of like that magnet thing. Yeah, that magnet thing. I used thing. to have one of those magnet things. Oh, you did? Kid. Yeah. They're very cool. And it raised my mm. dreams. So just the idea of these vehicles falling into the rhombus pile and then just stacking up one on, a, on a, each other. End to end. End to end. And I see an Imperial Star Destroyer in there, too. Ooh. And some other copyrighted things. Maybe we should move on. OK. <laughs> yes. Uh, and this is sort of an action path that we were thinking about. And yep. this is kind of everything at once. So Peter Chan did these amazing drawings that really set off the, the mood of the whole thing. He um, he signed them all. Yes, yes, he, 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 he signs them all. Too. And some reference of uh, things that are underwater. Look junky. Very cool. Uh, and just, just here's a boat, here's a ship, here's a this. You drew all those pictures? Really he so did. Know. No, they're just <laughs> reference for each, uh, everything. It's a lot of work. Um, and then Say would come in, and she did all these little like uh, corals and sea life. And she, what concept artists do a lot of times is they put numbers or letters next to everything, and mm -hmm. lets the art director choose. I like A. I like C. I like mm -hmm. A and C. It's also so you can make words out of the art later on, like hieroglyphics. Yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> That's never happened. Well, it's going yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you your next Christmas card written in these flora and fauna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, say did some seaweed, and uh, here's eels. some iteration of eels mm -hmm. that end up in our game. And uh, she would uh, take these, and uh, Ray would come in and be like, I like uh, this guy. And she would do a more um, cleaned up version. Mm -hmm. and and some more fish. And this Aww. is sort of a, a turnaround of our, our lovely puffer fish. He's very cute. Spoiler, there's a puffer fish in the game. Yeah. And he puffs. And he, yeah, he does mm -hmm. puffs. Mm -hmm. This is very cute. It's good to remember. Um, and Say would do all these cars and just. It's amazing how many of these we actually got in. Look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to bottle all these. Is a triple decker bus in there? Even that. Shark cage. <laughs> even that shark cage is in there. Yeah. yeah. Destroyed shark cage. One of the cool things about VR is actually having things that are like very close to you. So mm -hmm. anytime that you could like be inside of mm -hmm. a shark cage, mm -hmm. you could see the, the parallax when you moved inside of it. And this is a bagel painting, which was a painting over Peter Chan's work mm -hmm. and uh, gave the mood to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would give this to the world builders and mm -hmm. they would make it. Beautiful and lovely. Mm -hmm. And you also recognize it as the key art that we yeah, use. Yeah, the key art. Back oh my god, is it behind me right now? Yeah, it is. <laughs> now. Nice. Mm. Uh, and okay, so then I would mm. come in and. Grim Fandango. Uh, yeah, I forget the. It's a little yeah. like it. Oh, we didn't have this in, in the final, but I would. I wish. I, I came up with a whole bunch of different uh, viewpoints. 
I think we did have a skeleton in there somewhere. We did. You have to look around a bit. A skeleton, not sitting there still fishing. No, it's more chill. It implies he died in like a flash. You could say he's a backseat really driver. Quick death. Because he's still holding yeah. his fishing pole. I like that fish is just checking him out. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what are you doing, buddy? But I like the idea of you being inside that fish and they're like, oh, there's a skeleton. Oh, he's fishing. You can look around. And so <laughs> I did a whole bunch of these like really quick drawings on, on like on paper and I would send them out to the team. Like I had ideas about you're in a fish and then a shark eats you. But then you are seeing through the shark because he took over the, your body and Oh, no parking. Cool, cool signs. Cool signs, nice. And I would just send these out to the team. and. and My play. favorite thing on concept art is the artist's little comments you guys put next to things. <laughs> like, yeah. something cool here. <laughs> <laughs> Brad. Or, you yeah. need that. Yeah, exactly. OK. Very nice. Do you want to show what's on that paper? <clears throat> oh, uh, this this was just like a whole bunch of storyboards that Pretty I did. Pretty sure you can get that at Whole Foods. And I bottle. just wanted to. <laughs> So this is where it starts. So a lot of your work you do offline, yeah. not on the computer, and then we eventually scan it in and stuff. Yeah, and I would, I'd, I'd sit there and, and pitch things, and, and you, you guys would go, yes, that sounds great, or what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Emily would you come into the, the design meeting and just lay down a stack, mm -hmm. and then just spread them out, and we'd start arranging them all in different orders, and it was really great for us to kind of gel on ideas that way. Mm -hmm. Came up with a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. You got the paper to prove it. Mm-hmm. Lots of paper. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for all the art. Welcome. Want to who? You want a bail? Oh, you need my chair. Okay, they need my chair because they're gonna bring in two special. You had a meeting or something too, of course. And I also do have a meeting here yeah. too. So thank you for having me, everybody, and I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of Paul. One. Of the, one of the four Pauls. All Duncan. Paul's. One of the four Pauls. And he's going to do a live performance of a song if you ask him enough in the yes, chat. Yes, yes, might even get <laughs> Mr. Gray again. Welcome, Paul. Oh, yeah, let's see what people are talking about. These guys about are going to talk a little bit about uh, audio in the game. Uh, yeah. We were lucky to get some great music and great sound effects if you've played through it. So much about VR is atmospheric and the sounds. Uh, we integrated uh, the Wise, w -wise, w wise sound wise. engine into Unreal. Um, <clears throat> that was a big bit of Duncan's work. Yeah. And it gave us a lot of cool things we could do with it. So these guys are going to show you a few of their tricks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a big part of that, too, is the company's so used to working with our previous engine for so long. And right. it worked really well for Tim's workflow. So getting Unreal and Wise to kind of match Tim's workflow, how we're used to implementing his stuff and working around his writing style. Uh, that was a lot of the prep work was getting wise to do that so uh, that was mostly Duncan and me trying to say hey this is how I like to do things and he's like this is how I can do it with wise and these are our options. Coming to um, VR what was your most like immediate audio problem that you had? To solve? Problem? I mean it was or like it was know. more exciting is that everything is so positional in VR since it's a headset based uh, mixing environment people right. have binaural audio so you can really usually when we mix our games we kind of assume it's going to come out of a TV speaker for the most part because right. most people don't spend money on the high-end audio systems <laughs> maybe that's different nowadays but with the VR it's great because everyone can really hear the game the same way so uh, it gave me a lot of options as far as the soundscape to make it really right, feel yeah. live and everywhere you know we yeah, definitely the oh, go sorry. ahead go ahead uh, the binaural the word that you just said um, that means that it we're emulating how the sound actually travels through your ears and like through the back of your head or the you know the top of your skull to make it sound like it's actually coming from all around you. So if you hear a sound like some, you know, some guard is making a clinking sound behind you, the player will want to turn their head and, and see it because that's that's what yeah. it actually sounds like it's coming from. One thing we we noted for all you out there playing, make sure you get your headphones on right, uh, left over left ear, right over right ear. Lots of times when you're just listening to music, maybe you don't care. Right. You guys it's care, a big of course. Here, though. But <laughs> if you're doing a 3D sound, it really makes a difference. You want to make sure you hear yeah. the sound in the right direction. It's a really cool trick, though, because, I mean, you're, you might not realize it, but your ears are doing this for you all the time, and the way they're right. shaped is affecting when you hear a sound behind you. It's, there's filtering going on, your brain's mm -hmm. picking that up, and uh, someone's like, I'll just make that math, and we can do that all the time. So you just take your stereo headphones, <coughs> and it goes through the uh, binaural plug-in. More, yeah, no yeah. more normals, I imagine. More normals. <laughs> so, yeah, so normal. Lots of oh, it's pretty weird yeah. when your hearing is flipped. At the Exploratorium, which is a museum in town, they used to have a thing where you could put two ear trumpets on, and, and it flips it flips your hearing, it. and it oh, really cool. spins mm -hmm. you out. So 
Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I've done that's something wrong. Yeah. yeah, we have enough visual stuff that can make you a little nauseous in VR. We don't need the audio. Do that's true. That. <laughs> but uh, what are you going to show us, Duncan? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, so this is this is Wise or W Wise, the editor made by our friends at Audio Kinetic. Um, and it's so like a lot of knobs. Are, lot yeah, of knobs. yeah. So there's <laughs> lots of lots of things here, but. Um, one of the uh, one of the examples that this uh, one of the examples of uh, powerful tools that this gives us is um, like music transitions, and so we have um, the uh, boy band song that appears later in the game that we might play for you a little bit. Sure, yeah. But um, but you can see here that there's a bunch of different states to the song, and so um, you know if we start playing it, um, you know we get information about what measure we're on, and so it'll transition to the next part of the song on the next measure. Um, so this thing's smart enough to know kind of when it reaches a certain beat yeah. or a certain part so that it doesn't just skip in the middle like a record skip. Basically. And then so then it changes, you know, once that part of the chorus actually ended. These, so, these states will give me a ways to, to for Duncan to call it, you know, so when something happens in the game, he can say, call this state, and then in yeah. Wise, we're able to say, don't, but don't do it immediately, let's sync it up on the beat, so yeah, it doesn't like sound this is, weird. Yeah, this is where we say, like, oh, we're going right, right. far, and then it'll wait those and that, four measures. In that part of the game, the player could take however long they wanted, and then they'd do something in the game, and it would kind of go to the next stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the music had to be dynamic. You couldn't just pre-record it like a regular song. Mm -hmm. yeah. You had to, you know, expand and shrink the different, different yeah, sections. Yeah, this is about six different WAV files different loops and the game will seamlessly jump between you know stop this loop play this loop on the beat and it has sample accurate uh, cool which means cool. that it can do it perfectly on the right exact time there's no sync issues mm -hmm. and so we and we can also affect things like the low pass filter because when you're you know outside of the room in which the song is playing it sounds kind of muffled because it's traveling through the wall and so you know this thing gives us the ability to uh, play oh kind of like you're hearing it in another room or something right, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, your downstairs neighbors. Just right, that the downstairs old neighbor. CD and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your neighbors are making a bunch of noise, so it gives us that uh, that versatility, so we can change those those properties during the game. So can can show that level later. Uh, yeah, it's a great tool because it bridges cool. the gap between what I do and, and uh, helping Duncan have tools to do it, so he can take that uh, you know parameter and. You know, he can jump into a new perspective, and that'll filter it by this much because you're this far away from it. And it right, right, it. right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So that's this really is our cool. this is our cruise ship yeah. level, or it's a uh, cruise Balls, ship that's not. Levi was talking about the lighting. Right uh, Tim was commenting about the hexapals, which I think are actually sound sources you placed. Can you tell us a little bit in the editor kind of what what that oh, UI right. is? Yeah, uh, those are uh, audio kinetic objects. Um, so in this case, that's a speaker attached to the actor. Um, and what that's just showing is that this actor here is playing sounds, uh, has a co-voice. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, if you pick up that speaker and move it around, the sound stays with the speaker. Right. It's sort of attached it's to attached it. It's attached to that actor, yeah. OK, yeah. And that's playing uh, the music as well. So all okay. the music being So played. that song we just heard would actually be coming out of that. Right. right. OK. Exactly. Sounds like there's already music going on in there. Maybe so. coach is okay. Let's see. So you're hearing so that parameter kind of right now. Right, 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 that low pass filter we were talking well, about. Of kind of fades it out. This is kind of the, the debug version. There so. are signs of something, all right. Coach is certainly poisoning looks worse than with you guys. There's can... already music playing, and it's having no effect on it. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so you can see the, the music is actually coming out of the speakers based on how it's playing. Right, it looks like you tied the graphics into the sound wave as well yeah. to make it kind of pulse along with it. Yeah. That's a pretty cool technique. And then also the lights are changing on, on the beat of the song. I wonder what's behind that curtain. It's like a real stage show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <coughs> Would you go see Hope Pulse? I, I Hope if, Only if the real show was as good as the virtual one. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with a disco floor that big, oh, I mean. Yeah. Even more That's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool if you, um, if you destroy those speakers, the mix will actually get quieter in the game because you're destroying speaker locations for the song. So. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Volume, but yeah. 
Yeah, it's nice to be able to tie in all those elements. At, um, this particular level, you know, was a boy band concert. Yeah. Right. And so it really gave us a lot of opportunity Dreams to... Dreams coming true, man. <laughs> it's true. And Paul, you worked on the song. Yeah. And Duncan. Yes. And Duncan, too. Are and we going to uh, get a little bit of a harmonizing here? <laughs> we, we, don't have, we don't have the full uh, full cast from the original song, but, right, uh, right. but Paul wrote some, some sick beats yeah, for Yeah, I it. wrote the, the lyrics awesome and lyrics. the beat, and then these guys brought it to life. So what did you use for inspiration on the song? Uh, I turned my brain off, and then I just got to work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, did you do a little dancing when you were? Yeah, I did a little routine, okay, you know? Okay. Uh, been working on that for a while, though, so... <laughs> Get on this table and show us right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop dancing. Are you ready for the workman's comp? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, can, maybe cool. you can tell us a bit about the, the like Peter McConnell's role in the game. Yeah, Peter, yeah. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have a ton of mu minutes of music for this, but we, d we were fortunate that VR doesn't require a ton of music because it's weird to play music all the time. Oh, yeah. How does that work? Uh, it's, most of the time, it's positional music, so it's either coming from a source that makes sense, you know, because uh, otherwise it would be weird, right? Yeah. If it was just kind of right. omnipresent we, we found music. Some sneaky ways to trick weird, people yeah. a little bit, you know. In certain moments, maybe cinematic moments, it's okay, I think, to do a 2D sound or music mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. it's subtle and it's supportive of the scene. One of my favorite bits is the, one of the guards is wearing some headphones, and when you go into his brain, suddenly it sounds like you have headphones on and you're listening to something. Oh, yeah. Of course, when you're coming out, fun, it kind of yeah. gives you a different feel. We change a lot of stuff with the vision when you go into a character and they see the world differently, mm -hmm. but they also hear a little bit. Yeah, if it's you cool. want to do anything non-positional, you need to sneak it in with some kind of cutscene happening or something that just kind of feels like it's subtly eased in. Um, but anytime you just kind of 2D music in people's face, it kind of takes them out of their immersion because they don't remember putting headphones in. Why would there be music playing directly in the ears? <laughs> it's good that you think about that stuff, I imagine. That some people really think hard about it, and other people will just be like, oh, there's music now. Right. <laughs> Audio, like the lighting that Levi was showing, is, can often be the thing that you don't immediately notice. It's kind of just under your radar. But if it gets wrong, it really throws you off. So yeah, not everyone knows why they feel like they're being taken out of the immersion, but right. you know, for people who can tell that that's why, you know, it's very yeah. distracting. So. Yeah, I remember going into a level and Paul had gone in and added a bunch of ambience, water drips and that kind of stuff around. And I didn't know that he'd done that, but the level somehow felt better. <laughs> and I was like, did something change on this level? And I was talking to like, like Duncan and Silvio on it. What did we change in here? You know, it's a, we had a bunch of stuff, and it took me a while to realize it was actually the sound. Nice. Yeah. Peter did do an amazing theme song for us, though, in this game. I don't want to cut that down at all. That was freaking... I mean, no, that's yeah. the coolest intro to a video Yeah, you can hear that in the seen. trailer um, on our YouTube channel. Um, With Kim Nally, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's so okay. awesome. And we integrated it in the, in the game in a really kind of neat way with some, yeah. some intro credits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emily did a bunch of design for that, and we ended up <coughs> getting the song in there, and it... It actually ties into the theme of what's going on in the game at that yeah. point. It it's really so good. Someone well. thought the game was over when it started because they, they were watching the stream. We're like, "That's it. The game's over." Because it was like, "This is the credits. This is it." <laughs> no, dude, it's just starting, man. <laughs> and if you listen carefully, a little uh, secret Easter egg for you guys watching the stream: the end credits actually have a different version of the song, uh, different verses. So if you want the full song, you need to kind of uh. hear both the intro and the end. Yep, that's right. Play to the end. Got to beat the exactly. game. Exactly. Well, cool. I guess we're gonna close out this this stream. Do we have any big bangs to end this on, or are we just gonna just shut it down? <laughs> I guess that. Right, cool. Well, Thank thanks for joining us for this. Thank uh, you. Ramos of uh, Ruin Multi Stream. Congratulations, buddy. Yeah, to my team here. <laughs> nice work, guys, and the rest Thank of the team you. watching. I'm sure you guys worked hard too. Yeah, well, Psychonauts and Ramos of Ruin is out now. You right can go now. buy it on the PlayStation play. Store. Please do. Um, we'll be streaming again on Thursday, playing some games. Playing some What's games. up next on the stream? You know which games? Uh, are we doing? We don't know yet. But <laughs> 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 the thing we were doing fell through, but that's fine. It'll still be fun. But what yeah, about uh, next then. week? Got uh, GDC coming here in town. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Oh yeah? Are you talking? It is. No. I am not talking. I'm actually getting to attend this year, so very nice. Okay. Um, if you are going to GDC, then you can go to one of our Headlander talks. Um, Camden and your uh, buddy Camden is doing an audio talk on Headlander with David Earl, who uh, wrote the music on that game. And they're going to do a, a talk about synthesizers and stuff like that. Um, and the <laughs> <laughs> that's how you play a synthesizer. That's right? what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. We're anyway. showing off some cool games. Uh, Day, of the, Day of the Devs. Day of the Devs, indeed. Uh, if you're in San Francisco, then you can come to our thing at the Draft House uh, Theater 
Uh, Day of the Devs showcase of loads and loads of indie games come to that, please. You can look up that stuff on our website, I think. Definitely theirs. But yeah, that's us. We're out. We're going to go and party and stuff, right? Yeah. Play some All games. night. Back to work. Yeah. Back to work. Yeah. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Thank guys. You. See you soon. Thank See you. you.